After the international break, it's back to Premier League matters this weekend and there are plenty of big games to look forward to. We're going to pick out the three biggest, in our opinion, Warren Ashurst and Tom McGarry alongside me to run you through the three games and potential bets for this weekend. And we'll start off with the league leaders because Liverpool will host Newcastle in the early game on Saturday. The bookmakers seem to think it's a one-horse race in terms of this fixture, Tom, and that the home side We'll gather the three points pretty comfortably. Have you the same opinion? Yeah, it's very difficult to really back against Liverpool, isn't it? They've been fantastic over the start of this season and their, their record in the Premier League towards the end of the last campaign as well. It's very difficult to make a case for Newcastle. The only thing in their favour is no one gave them a chance against Tottenham mm. a couple of weeks ago when they went to North London and they managed to dig in and get a 1-0 victory, absorb a lot of pressure. Very difficult to do that two times in a row against a, a top six side, particularly considering the form Liverpool have been in. They just look like they can score goals at will. That front three, three of Firmino, Mane and Salah have been pretty much unstoppable over the start of the season. Liverpool have won the last two home fixtures between the two sides, mm. convincingly 2-0 and 4-0. I could see it being another 4-0 kind of scoreline. This is not the kind of game which is going to make or break Newcastle's season, but I think they could be in for a very long afternoon. Well, it's 25-1 to 1 if you fancy Newcastle to cause an upset at Anfield. 1-7 to 7 for Liverpool, and certainly they are the strong favourites. In terms of looking at other bets, one thing that I've been looking at and doing a bit of research in terms of those recent fixtures that Tom said, last season Liverpool did the double over Newcastle, and it was a defender that opened the scoring on both occasions, Virgil van Dijk and Dejan Lovren. And van Dijk, this time I can tell you, is 17-1 to 1 to be the first goal scorer. And the, the aerial threat is there from Liverpool. They've scored three goals with headers from set pieces already this season, Tom. That's an area they could look to exploit. Absolutely. And not just Virgil van Dijk, but the kind of mess he creates. Uh, other def opposition defenders are drawn to him and it, it creates openings for other players. We've already seen Joel Matip score a couple of goals this season, one in the league, one in the... Uh, in the community shield. So, yeah, that is an area that Liverpool probably don't get that much credit for because their play in, in open play is so good, but they are a threat from set pieces and Newcastle will have to be on their guard. Arguably the game of the weekend in the Premier League, though, comes at Old Trafford on Saturday afternoon. Manchester United against Leicester. These two teams look like serious rivals when it comes to European football qualifying for the European uh, competitions next season, Tom. It's going to be really intriguing to see where both of these two teams are at and how evenly matched they are. Well, based on what we've seen over the opening weeks of the season, you could argue it would be more surprising if Manchester United finished mm. in the top four than Leicester. Leicester, one of three sides still unbeaten in the, the league. They've got eight points from their opening four games. That includes a draw away, a traditional top six powerhouse in Chelsea. And I could certainly see them getting at least a point from this match. We know the frailties that Manchester United still have, particularly from a defensive point of view. It'll be very interesting to see how Harry Maguire fares against his former club. I can imagine one or two Leicester players are going to be really up for it against him to perhaps suggest, you know, you've moved to the wrong club, you should have stayed where you are. So I do think Leicester have an opportunity to get at least a point from this game. It's a match where I can see both sides scoring because they're both better going forward than they are from a defensive point of view. But yeah, I've, I've got a sneaking feeling for the Foxes. Yeah, well, I tell you what, I think it's only the home advantage which makes Manchester United the favourites in this game. They are about five to six in the betting. The draw 11 to four, and you can get 17 to four on Leicester, which I agree with Tom looks like a good bet. I also agree with Tom on the both teams to score. I do think there will be goals in this game. And you mentioned Harry Maguire there. He cannot be looking forward to playing against Jamie Vardy, who has scored twice in the last three fixtures against Manchester United and seems to be in a good run of form at the moment as well. Yeah, fantastic. Scored in his last two uh, Premier League games as well. Has a really good understanding with James Madison in the final third. And Maguire, he should know what Vardy's all about, but dealing with it is a, is a different thing altogether. The pace in behind will trouble both Maguire and Lindelof and the direct style that Leicester sometimes adopt, as we saw with Vardy's goal against Bournemouth last time out. It, it could be a difficult and uncomfortable afternoon for Maguire. I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if he went up the other end and scored himself from a corner. How often do we see that yeah. when a player comes up against his former club? But yeah, from a defensive point of view, it could be difficult. 47-20 to 20 for Jamie Vardy to score at any time, by the way, in that game at Old Trafford. Well, our third and final game to look forward to takes place at Molyneux. It's Wolves against Chelsea. 
Wolves, of course, still looking for their first win of the Premier League season. Uh, but they have shown some signs of improvement over the last couple of weeks. Chelsea, probably still more uh, questions to be answered for Frank Lampard's men, despite showing also uh, a few positive signs going forward. Yeah, it's a surprising statistic. These two were in the top seven last season, but they've only won one game between them in the mm. league so far this term. Uh, Chelsea's problems, if you like, have been well documented. They're struggling to keep clean sheets. They're trying to feel their way into this new era with Frank Lampard. A lot of young players impressing, getting an opportunity. Tammy Abraham and Mason Mount, most notably. But from a defensive point of view, they are struggling. They're up against a Wolves side who are notoriously difficult to beat. I mentioned they haven't won yet, but mm. three of their four games have ended in draws. They've struggled a little bit uh, with the uh, rigours of the Europa League as well at the start of this season, juggling the two with a, a relatively small squad. But the international break probably came at a good time for them. It's gave at least some of their players an opportunity to to recharge their batteries, if you like. And I think this could be quite a tight, difficult game to call. I actually feel like I should sit on the fence and say it could be a draw, a 1-1, one -one, something like that. I'm not quite sure Chelsea are capable of keeping a clean sheet, but I don't know if Wolves have the firepower necessarily to go and score two or three. So 1-1 one -one looks an attractive scoreline. I think we both go along with the fact that we expect goals. I can't imagine this is going to be nil-nil, to be honest with you. I think both of these sides will feel it's a game they can win. Uh, in far, as far as the odds are concerned, you can get about 41-20 to 20 on Wolves to gain a victory. Draw is 12 to 5 and Chelsea 31 to 20. I have to say, I'm edging towards the home side. I think Wolves are a really tough nut to crack at Molyneux. And a good price of 22 to 5 you can get on Wolves and both teams to score in this game. Certainly wouldn't be surprised to see that. And I think we are expecting another entertaining clash at Molyneux. That's my thoughts, and that's Tom's thoughts on the three selected matches. Let us know what you think on our social media channels, on Facebook and on Twitter. And make sure, of course, that you subscribe to our YouTube channel.